Hi, my name is Pearl Uberu and I am a technical marketing engineer here at Databricks. In this video, I'm going to take you through an end-to-end -end data warehousing and data analytics solution right here on Databricks SQL. I'll be working with the sample data set from the TPCH benchmark and we'll have access to tables that describe orders made by customers and line item information about the orders. I'm going to ingest the data, transform and clean it using materialized views, and then I'll use it to generate a dashboard that shares insights about customers and orders they have placed from an office supply business. Lastly, I'll show you how you can leverage the power of LLMs on your data using AI functions in SQL. First, we need to set up our compute resource, which in this case is a serverless warehouse. SQL warehouses are the compute resources that let you run SQL commands on data objects within Databricks SQL. Here, you can see the pre-configured serverless SQL warehouse called Data Team Serverless Warehouse. Let's see how it was configured. The cluster size is an extra small just to keep costs down. To reduce the latency of queries, you can increase the size as larger size clusters have a larger coordinator and double the number of cluster workers. The scaling piece here is for horizontal scaling. So Databricks can handle concurrent queries and admits them until the cluster is full before queuing starts. As previously stated, the warehouse we're using is serverless and it is the compute resource that is managed in the Databricks cloud. As an admin or a data consumer, all of the complexity of managing the underlying compute cluster is abstracted away from the user. Therefore, data consumers can focus on creating insights with Databricks SQL. Serverless SQL warehouses simplify SQL warehouse management and accelerate launch times. Unity Catalog is also enabled on this warehouse which will allow you to administer data access policies that apply across all workspaces and personas. Let's save the configurations of the warehouse and set up the SQL warehouse access control levels. There are three permission levels for a SQL warehouse. No permissions, can use, and can manage. And you can add specific users or groups of users to receive certain permissions. In the connection details tab, this is where you can get your details to connect Databricks to your data ingestion tools like Rivery and Fivetran and your JDBC connections as well. In the monitoring tab, administrators can examine the number of queries handled by the warehouse and the number of clusters allocated to the warehouse. When executing a query, you can navigate back to the SQL warehouse monitoring tab to understand the runtime statistics. Now, Let's take a look at the Catalog Explorer. The Catalog Explorer provides a space to explore and manage catalogs, schemas, tables, and permissions. The Catalog Explorer is the main UI for the Unity Catalog object model. Here, you can view schema details, preview sample data, and see table details and properties. A catalog is the first layer of the Unity Catalog hierarchy and is used to organize your schemas. You can create a catalog through the Catalog Explorer or a SQL command. To create via the Catalog Explorer, click the Create Catalog button in the upper right corner. I've already created a catalog titled dbsql tpch underscore demo. And as admin and creator of this catalog, I can change owners of the catalog and I can grant and revoke permissions to users or groups of users. Clicking into the catalog will allow you to see the schemas. A schema is the second layer of the object hierarchy and contains tables and views. For this demo, I'll be using a pre-created schema called TPCH and I've given the data science team permissions to use this schema. Once your SQL warehouses, catalog, and schema are created, you are now ready to start writing SQL queries. The SQL editor allows you to query data, view data in the schema browser, build visualizations, and configure alerts. Here, we're going to ingest our data into our lake house. To do so on Databricks SQL is super easy thanks to streaming tables.
Streaming tables are stateful tables designed to handle each row only once as you process a growing data set. Because most data sets grow continuously over time, streaming tables are good for most ingestion workloads. To create a streaming table, it's simple, and it's really similar to creating a regular table. Instead, we'll use the create or refresh streaming table command and then read the files from stream. Now that my customer's data has been ingested, I have created a streaming table to ingest my orders table as well. We can also create a materialized view. Materialized views reduce cost and improve query latency by pre-computing slow queries and frequently used computations. Here, I have a few lines of code to create a materialized view called orders underscore MV. Let's go ahead and run this query. We immediately see that it's erroring out. Once we read the error and then click diagnose the error, this is where Databricks Assistant comes in. Databricks Assistant is a context-aware AI assistant available natively in Databricks Notebooks, SQL Editor, and File Editor. Databricks Assistant lets you query data through a conversational interface, making you more productive inside Databricks. The Databricks Assistant has provided a solution to our error. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this, make a few edits, and then let's run this query. Now that the materialized view is created, we can see our materialized view by clicking the catalog browser and then opening up the view in the catalog explorer. Materialized views are valuable for analyst teams in a data warehousing context because they can be used to speed up end user queries and BI dashboards and securely share data. To simplify SQL operations and support migrations from on-prem and alternative warehouses, Databricks Lakehouse gives you the ability to build entity relationship diagrams that are simple to maintain and evolve. These features allow support for defining primary keys and defining foreign key constraints as well. Defining primary keys and foreign keys helps BI analysts understand the entity relationships and how to join tables. Since we already have our tables created, we are simply going to define a single primary key and foreign key. First, we're going to alter our already existing customer silver table by altering the column cusp key as not null. This is because the column must have unique values. Then we'll add the primary key using this short line of code. Now that our primary key has been created, we can add our foreign key to our order silver table by referencing our customer silver table. We will alter the cusp key column again to ensure that we have unique non-null values. And then we have now defined the foreign key. We can validate that our keys were created by heading back to the catalog explorer under our appropriate catalog schema and table name. Databricks provides a clear and intuitive representation of how data entities connect with the entity relationship diagram. And you can view it here under the table with our foreign key. Now, let's move on to query history. The query history shows SQL queries performed against SQL warehouses. This includes SQL runs from the SQL editor, dashboard refreshes, notebooks, jobs, and alerts. You can also use the information here to help debug and optimize your queries. If you click on a particular query, you'll see the query details. This will include information such as the query's duration, the SQL command, the number of rows returned, and the IO performance. Click on See Query Profile. This will take you to a more detailed view of the query's performance, including its execution plan. Now, let's create some awesome visualizations. In the left-hand navigation pane, select the icon title New, and then select Lakeview Dashboard. Lakeview provides improved visualizations via our new engine to deliver beautiful interactive charts and render them up to 10 times faster. Lakeview's drafting and publishing capabilities allow you to edit the dashboard freely while your consumers continue to interact 
with a stable version that they can trust. You can also securely share dashboards with consumers in your organization who may not have direct access to the Databricks workspace. Lastly, Lakeview dashboards are governed by Unity Catalog with Lineage built in, so your consumers always know where the insights are coming from. First things first, we need to add data to get started. Clicking the Data tab, I'm brought to a page where I can add data from a table that has already been ingested into my lake house. Or I could simply create a SQL query. I'll start with my order silver table and run that. Let's go create some visualizations in tandem with our dashboard. To create a visualization, click and select the area on the canvas where you want it. Databricks SQL provides BI analysts to create visualizations seamlessly. With our text-to-viz capabilities, you can create visualizations using natural language, and this can be super helpful for technical or non-technical users who would just like to derive insights from their data sets really quickly. In my canvas, I generated the full dashboard with the title in a text box that supports full markdown capabilities. I also have the number of orders counter visualization and a series of visualizations that showcase the minimum, maximum, and average price per day, the number of the orders and in what status they are in. But the coolest part of all of this is the filter that I added at the top here. I can type in any customer ID and the entire dashboard is filtered to accommodate my customer. You can also share the dashboard with users or groups of users and give them no permissions, can manage, can edit, can run, or can view permissions. You can also share the link to a draft of the dashboard as well. Now that our dashboard is ready, let's go ahead and publish it. A published dashboard will allow you to share the current version of the dashboard with any user in your Databricks workspace. Since we gave all users the access to view the dashboard and I'm embedding my credentials, They'll have the ability to see the dashboard even if they do not have access to the underlying data. Embedding credentials allows the queries to execute and the visualizations to render, leveraging the publisher's data and warehouse credentials. The Lakeview dashboard is now published and we can view the current version here. You can refresh the dashboard, make any edits by viewing it as a draft, and you can see the data lineage associated with the entire dashboard. Here, you can see that the orders silver and discounts table were utilized in the creation of our TPCH dashboard. Here at Databricks, we understand that being able to use the BI tools our customers know and love is important. Perhaps you've heavily invested in Power BI for your organization and you really want your analyst teams to continue to use it to derive business insights. We've made it easier to publish data sets to Power BI online workspaces without having to switch to Power BI desktop as an intermediate step. To do this, it's really easy. Just select your schema and then select your workspace from Power BI. Then open Power BI to begin creating awesome visualizations. Alerts can also be set up to notify you when a field return by a scheduled query meets a threshold. Let's create one. Just go to the alerts tab on the left and click create alert button. Give the alert a name and then select the query you want the alert to be based on. Then I'll set up an alert for when the total number of orders goes above 800,000. We will send the notification just once and then there's an ability to specify a custom template for the alert. For this example, we'll use the default template. Different destinations can be added for the alert as well, such as email, Slack, Webhook, or Microsoft Teams. Now, let's talk about workflows. Databricks Workflows is a fully managed orchestration service. It enables data engineers, data scientists, and analysts to build reliable data analytics and ML workflows without the need to manage complex infrastructure. The goal here is to make a workflow that takes the raw bronze data, transforms it into our final gold table, and finally refreshes the dashboard. Off screen, 
I created this workflow that does exactly that, the TPCH workflow here. As you can see, the line item bronze and orders bronze tables are clean to create the line item silver and order silver tables. Then those silver tables are joined to create the order status gold table and an alert. Lastly, the task here is to refresh the dashboard. Let's take a look at how Unity Catalog captures runtime data lineage across queries run on Databricks. Back in the Catalog Explorer, we can view lineage graphs for each table to see all the upstream and downstream tables. To view the lineage diagram for a table, for example, the order silver table, click on the table, then go to the lineage tab. Here, we can see the upstream downstream tables and a list of workflows, dashboards, and queries that the table is used in. If we click on see lineage graph, we get a view of the upstream and downstream tables as well. Now, let's make things a little bit more fun. With the incredible progress being made in the space of large language models, Databricks SQL has built in AI functions that allow you to access LLMs directly from SQL. Let me briefly show you how to do this using the Azure OpenAI service as our LLM. In future releases, we'll enable other large language models, including open source LLMs, such as Dolly. My manager has shared that the analyst team spends copious amounts of time trying to sort through a column of data that houses descriptions about the companies we have opportunities with. He believes that it is becoming much more time consuming and complex as the company descriptions become more detailed. I introduced him to the idea of leveraging LLMs to help resolve this issue. First, I create a function that classifies the description column and wrap that using the AI generate text function. It would be great to reduce the amount of time the analysts spend reading or analyzing these descriptions. And so I feed it the prompt, please provide a five word summary of the following. Now that my function has been created, I can now feed it a description and see the five word summary generated for a company called The Edge. My manager is thoroughly impressed and believes that sorting through five word summaries instead of these long descriptions would be much easier and would free up the time of our analyst team. Now you're ready to get started using Databricks for your analytics, warehousing, and AI needs.